So hello and welcome everybody. Uh, this is, as you can see, the uh, this is part two of a webinar that we started. Uh, I want to say it was all the way back last July, so it might have been about six months ago uh, that we started talking about the new certifications from Microsoft. And so, real quick, uh, I, and I am going to do this real quick is just kind of do a very, very fast introduction because we want to get right into stuff and then more importantly, we want to make sure that you have time to ask questions. Uh, I'm going to do my best to answer your questions and anything that I can't answer, uh, as Dana had mentioned, we do have with us Erica Cravens from Microsoft Learning and uh, I know that anything I can't answer that she's going to be able to answer. So real quick, who am I? Uh, you know, at this point, I, I bet that there's a good many of you who have probably been to a webinar with me before because I've done a number of these here at Train Signal. Uh, I'm just a guy who's been around, t you know, technology and computer networking for a long time. Uh, there's a lot of blah 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 on the screen. I won't bore you with. Um, yeah, I'll even go ahead and show you. Hey, look at that. I've taken a lot of tests, so uh, I just want you to know that, you know, the stuff that I'm talking to you about, uh, I do believe in it. Uh, I practice it. Uh, I, I also want to point out that, I, you know, I'll be very upfront with you here. You'll notice that it says MCSA times two and MCSE times three, and those are the Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator and Systems Engineer, the old MCSA and MCSE. Uh, I myself am still working towards the new certifications. Okay, so I'm in the same boat with uh, probably many of you working to to get. Uh, in on all of the new Microsoft certifications. Uh, real quick, before I go any further, uh, Erica, are you here with us? I, I don't have a I don't have a headshot to throw up on the screen, uh, but do you want to say hi real fast? Sure, sounds good. I am here with us. <laughs> this is Erica Cravens, and I work in Microsoft Learning, and work on the team that helps define how our certifications are developed. So what? What we include as far as exams, um, I'm not on the technical side. It's more about what are the right skills uh, that we need to be testing. How many exams do we need to have in a certification? What levels are we looking at um, as far as within those certifications? So really identifying what is the market showing as far as technology and how do we address ensuring that with that technology we are validating the right skills. Great. Well, Erica, it is always a pleasure to have you here with me. Help me out. Uh, make sure we get these questions answered correctly. And what I want to do is, uh, now that we've introduced ourselves, I want to throw uh, a couple of quick questions at all of you who are here in the room with us. Don't try clicking right now. You're just looking at a, at a PowerPoint slide. Uh, but I do want to throw up a few poll questions so that I can kind of get to know who my audience is. So if you bear with me for just a moment, I'm going to pull up the actual poll. I'd like to know where in the world uh, you are here from. Let me go ahead and launch this. There we go. And I will, as I always do, I will apologize to those of you who are in South America, Africa, and possibly Antarctica. Uh, I don't mean to bunch you all together, but I could only put five, I <laughs> the option to put five choices here, and there's more than five continents. Uh, I also, I will, uh, you know, mention that Australia, I'm referring to the continent, not the country, because I always get feedback every single webinar, although I don't see anybody saying they're from Australia this time, uh, complaining that, you know, I should have put New Zealand or, you know, or something other than Australia. So anyway, it uh, looks like most everybody has voted. It looks like we have uh, a good many people uh, here from North America. Uh, let me go ahead and uh, close the polling. So if you haven't answered, real quick, click on where you're from, and we'll take a look at these answers. There we go. So it looks like we have about two-thirds of the audience here in North America where I'm at and where Erica is at. Uh, we have a, a good many. It looks like about uh, almost 20% from Europe and uh, some from Asia. And we do have, I, I'll tell you what, uh, my apology out to South America, Africa, and Antarctica. Uh, this is probably the largest percentage I've had uh, on that particular selection. So welcome, everybody, uh, here into this session. Next, I want to go ahead and ask you about IT certification. I'd like to know if you've ever taken an IT certification exam. Okay, I don't care whether you've, you know, I just want to know if you've taken it. You know, if you don't hold an actual certification, if you've just taken tests, I want to know about it. And I want to know, has it been Microsoft? Has it been maybe from other vendors? 
and then how many of you are uh, truly brand new to this and you're just looking to get started so it looks like uh, almost everybody has voted uh, so good and by the way thank you for everybody for paying attention and getting your votes in quick it'll help us to move along and get into uh, some of the material that we're gonna cover so I'm gonna go ahead and close this and let's take a look at the results All right, so it looks like uh, almost 60% of you have taken at least one Microsoft exam. Uh, about a quarter of you have taken IT exams from other vendors. And we have almost 20% of you who have never taken a certification exam in the world of IT. So uh, Erica, you know, I'm sure she is very excited to hear that you guys are here and interested in what Microsoft has to offer in their new certification uh, the new certifications and the new exams. So, uh, and I can tell you, it's very exciting. All right, one last question. I apologize, or I, not apologize, but I promise we will move forward here. And that is for those of you who have taken Microsoft tests and you've passed those tests. What is the highest level or the most current level of certification that you have right now? Okay, so we have the old original MCP from back in the day. I have two different choices there for MCSA and MCSE. We have the old version, which is the Microsoft Certified Systems Administrator and Systems Engineer. And then we also have the new MCSA, which is the solution. Oh, I'm going to mess this up because I don't have it in front of me. <laughs> I always want to go back to the other one, but I believe it's Solutions Associate. Is that correct, Erica? Sorry, I was uh, on mute. Yes. Ah, solutions okay. Associate is yes, the MCSA. Yes, and MCSE is Solutions Expert. That one I do know. Uh, it's always the MCSA that messes me up. Uh, there is the MCTS and MCITP, which we had for a little while, for a few years. Uh, I think about five years in the mix there. And then there's some other stuff for those of you who are maybe here from the developer side or from the database side or possibly even the office side of things. So anyway, uh, it looks like, it looks like uh, a number of you have voted. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and let's see what we have. Okay, so about a quarter of you have at some point became an MCP, so you took a Microsoft certification exam and passed it. That's great. About a third of you have the old MCSA, MCSE, 17% with the MCTS, MCITP arena. And look at this. 13% of you are already part of this new certification program. So that's great. And I'll tell you what, for the 13% of you, uh, hopefully there is something that we have to add to what you are already familiar with since you've already achieved at least MCSA level. And then even beyond that, uh, I, you know, I definitely would like for you guys to chime in with, with the Q&A. You know, go ahead and give us your questions on you know, maybe something that you experienced and you're curious about it or something you were expecting and didn't see. Um, throw those questions out there uh, so that we can try to get these cleared up for you. All right, so with that, let me go ahead and pop back over and continue with our presentation. Now, in part one that we did back in July, what I basically did was I went through and talked about what IT certification is, okay, as far as why it exists and why we would want to achieve it. I went through a history of Microsoft certification going all the way back to the 1990s when this all started. And I gave you a basic introduction into the new MCSA and MCSE. And I will tell you that back then, we didn't have nearly uh, the number of certifications that we now have today. Okay, we had a much smaller number of certifications available, so there wasn't a lot to talk about. So that's what we're going to do in today's session. We are going to kind of continue where we left off. And I will tell you, if you didn't see that session, and you're interested in any of that information uh, that I just mentioned that I talked about in the last webinar, uh, it is still available for on-demand uh, viewing uh, from our website. So uh, feel free to come to Train Signal and go back. And if you want to see the history of Microsoft certification, you've never, you know, you're not aware of it, and you're curious, go back and watch that webinar. But what we're going to today is we're going to look at all of the new certifications. I'm going to guide you through the new Microsoft certification website. And I will tell you, um, and really I should probably say Microsoft, Lear it's a, I think it's Microsoft Learning's website, but it's the certification area that we're going to talk about. And I will tell you that that's where I'm going to do essentially this entire, the rest of this webinar from. I'm going to do it from 
that website. So we're going to talk about things while we're looking at the website. And then there is an extended Q&A. Now, here's how that's going to work if all goes well. <laughs> and that is, it's not that we're going to stay here and extend out the webinar to uh, a longer period of time than what was already scheduled. Uh, yes, I can give you a little bit of extra time uh, if there are a lot of good questions coming in. But what I'm going to do is we're going to not talk to you a whole, you know, as long as we normally do. Okay, We're going to kind of give you the information. And I know from when we did part one and from when we did another webinar that was actually about a year, uh, it was quite a while ago, it was, I think, a year ago. It was a year ago, November, I think it was. Uh, you guys had about an hour and 45 minutes worth of just Q&A, a lot of questions out there. And so we want to make sure that your questions are answered. So think about what you want to ask and get ready to throw those questions into the queue, and we're going to get them answered for you. So like I said, I'm going to take you through the website itself. So just to give you a starting point, uh, something that's very easy to remember, I always tell people to just simply go to Microsoft.com slash learning. So I'm going to go ahead and go there now. And here we go. Now, one real quick comment, uh, just so that people don't, because I know that when I you know, first see websites, when I have to scroll a lot, you know, I'm thinking, wow, why do I have to scroll so much on this website? For the purposes of making sure that everybody here with us today can see everything, I'm at a very low resolution. So it's making the website look like <laughs> that you know you can't see much and you have to do a lot of scrolling to see everything. Typically, you wouldn't have to scroll as much as what we're going to have here today. So I just want to kind of throw that out there uh, so you don't hold that over Microsoft Learning and, and the design of this website. Because I will tell you, uh, this website in the past, for me personally, and, and, and keep in mind, I'm saying this with a member of Microsoft Learning on the line with us right now, uh, so I'm being very straight with you, uh, it was very confusing to me in the past. Uh, I had difficulty navigating it in the past. And I was very excited when I learned a few months back that this was being completely redesigned and, and, and just a complete makeover. So as you can see, if you, if you look at the screen right now, you can see there's, there's four main boxes, right? There's one very big box that has rotating, uh, what you'll see very often on different uh, websites might be advertisements. Although you'll notice here, it's not as much of an advertisement as much as they're really highlighting the main things that people are interested in right now. Okay, what's hot right now? Okay, so that's what we have in that revolving box. Then to the right, we have three static boxes. We have, and this again, <laughs> these are the main things I know when I come to this website I'm looking for. If I want to get certified, fine, then find certifications. If I'm looking to get trained, maybe to get ready for certification, find me some training. And the third one, hey, maybe I'm already done with all that and I truly want to go take the test now, register for an exam. Now, if I scroll down a little bit, You'll also see there are there are three, or really there's four. There's four main sections here. Um, so there's the latest post from our blog, and this is kind of cool, where these are some of the articles on the blog uh, that are uh, recently posted and uh, also sometimes the ones that have a lot of activity and people are very curious about. I love this section right here, the top certifications. Okay, So re regardless of having that certification button that takes me right into you know everything about all certifications here's the ones that are hot right now and, and I get that question all the time by the way I get people who ask me all the time what's hot right now people you know sometimes want to get involved with what's hot so these are the top certifications there are other popular links and then also we have a video here which I'm not gonna play for you uh, which shows you some of the benefits so for some of you that are thinking well, why should I even bother with this um, right now we have uh, uh, Andrew McMurray with a video telling you about you know some of his story and and what it did for him and I actually have a video that I'm creating right now that may or may not ever make it to this web this website um, but I do know that Microsoft Learning is going to have out there uh, about my certification story uh, you'll notice uh, right up here you know right away um, that if I want to jump into let's say MCSA Windows Server 2012 when I click on it, it takes me right there. I mean, 
you can't get much easier than that, right? And there's a certification I'm interested in. I click on it, and this is the page that's going to have all the information. Now, before I go through this page, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and take us back. And the reason I want to take us back is because I want to kind of walk you through. Uh, and, of course, now would be the time that my Internet is lagging. Um, <laughs> either that or I'll, I'll blame it on Microsoft Learning. Their website is lagging. Um, <laughs> so, basically, I want to show you. Let's pretend like we don't know a specific certification we want to go to. If we scroll back up here to the top, find certifications. Right? I'm interested in certification, but I don't know specifically what I want to do. So I'm going to click that big button can't, that you can't miss. And here's what you get. You start off with an overview that shows you that there are four main categories. Am I interested in servers? Am I interested in desktop? Am I interested in databases? Or am I a developer? Okay, these are the four main areas. And as I click on each one, and I will tell you, it's, it's a little bit difficult to see. I'm going to scroll this up so maybe you can see some of it. When I click on desktop, it changes what the different paths are that are available. Click on database. Here are the paths that are available. Developer. Here are the paths that are available. Now, I'm a server guy, so I'm going to go ahead and use server as our example here. But I encourage you to go ahead and, as a matter of fact, if you have the means to watch this webinar, maybe you have a second monitor and you want to follow along, go ahead and go to Microsoft Learning and, and click where I'm clicking, and maybe you click on an area that means more to you. And under the server environment, you see that we have the different paths, right? We have MCSA. We then move on to MCSE, and finally on to MCSM which is the Solutions Master. Okay, So uh, if we scroll down a little further, you'll see there's a lot of frequently asked questions. And by the way, these truly are frequently asked questions. I can tell you that almost every single question that is listed here has been asked of me either in the previous webinar or out on Facebook or through email. Or I mean, I've been asked almost every single one of these questions. So this is a great place to go and get some of these questions answered right away. Now, the other thing I want to point out is how cool is this that it's kind of showing me the whole path right here. So that way, if I'm new to this and I'm looking to get my MCSA, here's my information. Maybe I've already done my MCSA, and now I want to see what's next. All right, well, I don't have to go any further. I have all my MCSE information. And if I'm already in MCSE and I'm looking to be MCSM, same thing, have it here. But let's, again, take this one step at a time. Let's say we want to start with MCSA. Here we have Windows Server 2012. So let's click on that big box. Again, nice big boxes, can't miss it. This also, by the way, uh, seems to me, although I'm on a computer right now, it seems as though this website would be quite conducive to a tablet, you know, a touch screen environment with these big boxes. Okay, so that's another nice thing that's been included. So here we have MCSA Windows Server 2012. And you'll see that it's very clear. Right? I mean, just right to the point. Starts off talking about what MCSA 2012 does for you. Uh, real quick, I'm going to take a quick sidestep and show you here that there's a link where it says if you're brand new to IT, I mean, if you're brand spanking new to this, you may actually want to go a step even further back than MCSA and do the true entry level, which is MTA certification. So I'm going to quickly click on this link just so we can look at MTA, the Microsoft Technology Associate. If I scroll here, you'll see that we basically have an infrastructure track with four different infrastructure-based exams. There's a, one exam in the database track and one, two, three, four, five in the development track. I will tell you that I have actually taken... Uh, I, I don't know. I know. I know. I've passed the four infrastructure exams. Uh, I took database and a few of the development exams. Uh, I was curious how they, you know, what what they actually had in them. Uh, being that I'm not a database guy and I'm not a developer, uh, and it was very interesting. I thought they were very well designed exams that truly showed that you know what you need to know for entry level. Uh, in those different arenas. In other words, because I'm an infrastructure guy, I pass those exams. No problem. It definitely made sense. Uh, because I'm not a database guy and I'm not a developer, well, those exams were a bit of a struggle. Okay, So it wasn't an automatic. You are going to have to still study even for these entry-level exams.
But let me go ahead and back out of there. That's the MTA. Let's get back to the MCSA. MCSA. It takes three exams, as you can see here, to become MCSA in Windows Server 2012. And it's very clear here, 410, 411, and 412. When you want to find out information about one of those individual exams, what do you think you do? This is what I love about this website. Click on it. Click on the box, and it's now going to take me to a page that shows me everything I need to know about taking the 410 exam. So if I scroll down a little bit here, you'll see that there is information about how long the exam has been out, right? It has been published since September. The languages you can take it in, who it's meant for, what technology it's on. And if we come down here and start expanding these, and, and um, there's going to be a lot of scrolling here when I expand all these down, but you'll see that we have an overview of everything about the exam as a whole, these different exam topics that are covered, who it's meant for, what certification it goes toward. In other words, it allows you to kind of reverse engineer back and say, well, all right, well, I'm looking at the 410 exam, and you, maybe you forgot what certification you were going for. It reminds you, this will take you towards MCSA and Windows Server 2012. If I click on ex, uh, expand here on skills measured, this is where I get into the detailed coverage, right? We had the topics under general, but here we get into very detailed topics that are going to be covered and I apologize I'm scrolling and I don't know how well you know some of the lag depending on uh, uh, you know internet speeds all, that we all have around the world uh, if some of this comes out blurry uh, but these are all the different skills that are measured preparation materials well here it talks about the actual Microsoft official classroom learning uh, e-learning which is currently not available Microsoft press books uh, practice tests, which I think are very important when going for certification exams, uh, they are not yet available, but uh, I, I know I was actually just on the phone yesterday with uh, one of the providers, and they're getting pretty close, so should see something there very soon. And then we also have some online resources. Now, at this point, I have, you know, I feel kind of obligated here <laughs> to uh, point out that when it comes to preparation material, uh, you know, I work for this company called Train Signal, and maybe you've heard of it. And we do provide uh, training material, and so I happen to have it bookmarked up here. That if you go to Train Signal's website, you'll see here that we have Windows Server 2012 installing and configuring uh, training for the 70-410 exam. It says here that it's still in development. Well, I'm here to tell you that it is in the very very final stages of development and is uh, planning to be released next week okay so for all of you who have been asking me and bugging me and yes I've been getting a lot of pestering and that's a good thing I'm not complaining I keep the pestering coming uh, you're gonna have a course real soon here from train signal but let's pop back over to Microsoft and, and continue back on this website the one last thing I want to show you here is that when you are ready to take the exam from this exam page you can schedule your exam this will take you directly to Prometrics website where you can go ahead and schedule the exam are you getting kind of the idea of how this site was put together I mean even without going any further into it you should already be understanding right now that everything flows I mean everything really really flows with this website no more getting lost now let me go ahead and uh, let's let's back out of here. Okay, and while you're doing that, let me uh, jump in really quick. A couple clarifications on yes. the exam detail page. First and foremost, uh, while we have done a redesign to some degree of that page to look and feel more like these pages, we're actually in the midst of re-evaluating that as well and making sure that that's even more clear as far as what are the skills you're going to be um, test. We're going to be testing what preparation materials, et cetera, that in fact um, are available. <clears throat> so a couple different things on that. You may see this change a bit in the future. With that said, um, another couple things. Uh, the skills measured, to be very clear, what we cover in our skills measured is we do cover, in essence, the skills or topics that are going to be tested. Now, one thing I do like to point out is that we do state here this objective may include that means that you need to be prepared for this, 
but in fact it is possible you won't see it on the exam. So in many cases you will see most of this on the exam, but these are the types of things that we are um, encouraging people to get skilled on and ensure that you know this. I recommend using the skills measured tab as your verification that you're ready for the exam. So you're going to do a lot of training uh, with Ed hopefully and you're going to learn a lot but what you do before you go take that exam is go through this list and say do I know this information. The second thing I'd want to point out as well is while we do show practice tests on here as a way to get uh, set up for the exam and prepared for the exam, we don't actually own the practice tests ourselves. So if you have an issue with it, we actually cannot fix it. Uh, it is with the practice test provider. So that's where you want to go. We just do like to partner with them from the standpoint of we don't have a solution for that. And I know a lot of people really enjoy having a practice test. I know I do before I go and take an exam. So just a few points of clarification on that um, for everybody moving forward. Thank you. Thanks, Erica. And by the way, thanks thanks for the, you know, you'll be training hopefully with Ed. I, I, I like that. So um, <laughs> hopefully they will as well. Of course. Um, so what I've done is you'll notice all I did was I, I just backed uh, back out to where we were, uh, where we're seeing the MCSA and the MCSE. Uh, I actually went one step too far. I want to I go ahead and stay here on the MCSA because I want to show you that if you're looking into kind of this path, you're on MCSA, and I said everything just flows, right? Right at the top here, they're talking about, hey, oh, well, that was kind of crazy. Uh, right here at the top, if, you know, if you're brand new to this, if you, if you think that this is looking overwhelming, we have something that's a little bit more entry level for you. Then from there, they actually show you the different exams. Then from there, where would you go next, right? I get that question all the time. Great, I've just achieved something. Now what? Well, we're showing you. Now you move on to your MCSE. Now before I click on this link to, to learn about the MCSE, I want to show you that there is this little expandable section right here that says upgradable certifications. Because many of you said that you are currently certified in something prior to the current MCSA. And you may be thinking to yourself, is there an upgrade path? And the answer is yes. If you expand this section right here, you will see that they show you all the different certifications that you, if you currently have, you qualify to take a single upgrade exam. It's the 417 exam. This exam takes the place of 410, 11, and 12. So instead of taking three exams, you can take one exam and get your upgrade. If I were to click on that exam, just so that we can go in and take a look, you'll see that the page looks very similar to what we just saw in the 410, right? The whole look is the same. And if we go through the overview here, this is where it'll go in and show you that it's going to cover the same things as exam 410, 411, and 412. But in order to qualify, you have to have one of those other certifications. So this is this is all pretty cool. Let me go ahead and, and, and back back out of here. Because again, this all flows. What do I want to do next? I want to get my MCSE. When I click on MCSE, this is where I now get to see all the different choices. And there are many different choices. And I want to give some clarification, and, and Erica, again, by all means, feel free to step in if you want to clarify beyond what, what, how I explain it here. But this is, and these are expert, I mean, it's right in the name, right? Solutions Expert. These are expert level certifications. Okay? This is not just like, uh, I'm on a whim, I'm going to go become an MCSE. These are expert level, and they are therefore very specific to certain solutions. That's why we see server infrastructure solutions, desktop infrastructure solutions, private cloud solutions, data platform, and so on and so forth. There's eight of them here. You'll also notice that there's no version tied into these. In other words, MCSA, we saw there was MCSA in Windows Server 2008. We saw there was MCSA on Windows Server 2012. When it comes to the MCSE, there's no version. 
And the reason is because it's surrounding a solution, not in a product. Okay, so uh, what that also means is that there are some changes with regards to uh, keeping your certification up to date. Okay, when it comes to the MCSA, those types of certifications, you know, you'll get your MCSA on Windows Server 2008, and you can then upgrade when we have Windows Server 2012. And you get that, you'll be able to upgrade when we have whatever the next version is, right? Uh, whereas with MCSE, it's going to be based upon, and I believe it's actually down here in the Q&A. Uh, if it's not here, uh, let's see here. Yeah, what are the recertification requirements for the new MCSE certifications? To ensure that they uh, all remain meaningful and valuable, uh, they will require recertification every three years. And Erica, I know it's on the main page, but here we're looking specifically at MCSE. I believe MCSD, which is the developer side, the solution side, uh, development side, that's every two years. Is that correct? That's correct. And okay. for both MCSE and MCSD, the uh, action you would take in order to recertify is to take a recertification exam. Okay, great. So, and, th and this is something that we don't have... Uh, too many specifics to share with you today because we're not at a point of having a need for those recertification exams yet. Uh, the recertification exams, the way they've been explained to me, is that basically, you know, instead of having an actual exam that is labeled with, you know, let's use server as an example, Windows Server 2012, and then we have our next version of server. The new exam won't be labeled specifically Windows Server whatever number into the future, but the questions that are on the exam and the solutions that are being questioned will be about whatever is current in the industry at that time. So uh, what do, where do we go from here, right? We pick one of our MCSEs. If I click Server Infrastructure, again, sorry, I'm a server guy, look what we get we get a page that looks just like the MCSA page but with all the information that we need for MCSE and here is something that I also am really excited about uh, I was concerned that when you clicked on this page all it was going to show me was the 413 and 414 exam I was concerned that I was going to no longer see the 410, 11, and 12 because I know there was a version of the website previously where it would say it would start off by saying get your MCSA and then take these other two exams I love the fact that it shows me all five exams so that if I started here, maybe I set my goals for MCSE from day one. I'm starting right here. Well, what's, you know, what do I need? And it shows me all five exams that I need. Again, if I scroll down a little bit, you'll notice there are upgradable certifications. It's going to show me the same thing. The only difference is going to show me the 417 exam being the upgrade exam, then again, 413 and 414. From there, again, everything flows, earn your MCSM certification, right? You've done your MCSE, where do I want to go from here? Well, it takes you into the Microsoft Certified Solutions Master, and you'll notice that this says that it is a prerequisite for your Microsoft Certified Architect, and I'm going to actually hand this over to Erica, who is more familiar with this than I am, and I want to make sure I don't, you know, I'll, I'll speak when I've been given information, but uh, I'm not feeling very comfortable on MCA, so I'm going to let Erica kind of explain this process to you. And Erica, I'll try to click through for you as you're talking about it. Okay. Um, it, we can probably remain on this page. Uh, okay. for, for those that aren't familiar with our master's program, um, it also has been known to be called the Certified Master. So the previous version was the Microsoft Certified Master. It is a very small amount of people that have earned that certification. And the reason is it is extremely intensive. Um, the exams, as I understand it, um, and I don't manage the Master's program, but I do know information about it. <clears throat> On the Master's side, we have quite a few people who don't pass those exams. So it is not something that is easy to do. Each program can be slightly different. So we have the MCSM data platform. And you'll notice that we have SharePoint communication and messaging. Those exact words are the exact same words as the MCSEs. And then the MCSM 
data platform is also the same word that you would find with the MCSE. There's an MCSE data platform. That's the SQL side. So they do align very, very directly. You'll know exactly where what you need as a prerequisite before you can, in fact, apply. There is an application process. There's a cost to that application. So you spend money just to submit your application and be considered for the program. Then there is, um, after that, the actual training. In some cases, training is required. So there is a, an actual set of courses where you come to Redmond and actually train with experts on the product. They teach you the ins and outs. You've got very detailed, specific information. And it is more focused on the technology and going deeper on that technology, um, as opposed to the, the solutions expert is much broader. So you'll, you'll already have achieved that broad scale solution information. And then what you're going to do is you're going to refine that and go even deeper so you know that product inside and out. Um, so as you can see here, it does show which one has training required and which one is training is optional. And these are very, very, very new. They're in process. Um, they're not all launched at this point. I think the first one we might have um, starting is the SharePoint, and I believe that's in the next month or so. Once you have the MCSM, you can apply for MCA. That is an even smaller audience. If I remember correctly, there's somewhere around 50 or 60 MCAs in the world. These people are basically industry experts. They are well known. Um, they are looking at architecting large enterprise corporations. Again, a very difficult certification to achieve, expensive. What is required, that is it's a board certification. Uh, so you go through a board review process, there's a project involved. So again, a lot more rigor to that program, um, and again, not very many people in it. Uh, the Solutions Master, we're, we're hoping to expand. Hopefully we'll see some things coming up in the future where the training may not always be required at Redmond Campus. We may be able to find ways because we do have, obviously, many of you who are um, internationally located, and that is a cost to travel. So we're looking at having some training available in other countries as well. And then, of course, we do have, um, you know, the tr so messaging as we show here is, is training is optional. So you can go take the exams, um, and as long as you pass them, you're fine. But if you don't pass them, you're still going to need to find some, probably some training in order to skill up and be ready to pass them the next time. Great. Thank you very much, Erica. Um, I, I could not have explained it as well. <laughs> uh, what I want to do here is uh, a couple things real quick. First, I'm going to actually click the back button just to kind of take us back because there is, there is one thing that I want to show you. And Erica, I know I mentioned this to you when we were talking privately, and uh, I will mention that, you know, er I'll remind you guys that Erica already mentioned that this website is new and uh, is still being worked on. I mean, I think it's pretty... <laughs> it's pretty darn good where it is right now, uh, but there are a few little quirks here and there. And one that I found, and I don't know of any other way to get there, but if you get into one of these environments like the MCSE or if you're on the MCSA page, uh, up at the top here on the breadcrumbs, there's this Windows Server Certifications. And this is a page that actually I think is pretty cool and, and shows you a bunch of things and also it has some, uh, some frequently asked questions that you don't see broken apart the same way. Uh, so... I'm not sure how else to navigate to this page, uh, but that is one way to get there. And this is a great page to kind of give you the whole overview across the board on server certifications. So just kind of a quick side note on, on, on that. All right. So that is kind of the basic idea. And, and again, I want to kind of back out here and jump all the way back out to uh, the overview page which I, I, I know I don't have to click back. I could actually come back up to the top and do it. But I just, again, want to kind of remind you as a whole, when it comes to the new certifications, there's two things. In my opinion, number one, Microsoft has done a great job at really looking at what the industry needs as far as the certifications go. And number two, it, for us to figure it out, <laughs> right, we have webinars like this, but what about when we don't? 
I think they've done a great job on this website to go through and make this real easy, real kind of you know concise and to the point. No matter you know, even if I, I don't really know anything on the development side, but I can click on developer, and I can fairly fairly quickly and easily realize, okay, so obviously it's an MC, MCSD that I want to go for. I can figure out is it, is it something on Windows Store apps? Is it web applications? Application lifestyle management? What is the arena that I want to be in? Uh, one other thing that I want to point out about this website, I don't know if you noticed, but while Erica was talking, a little uh, a little live chat box opened up. Uh, I've noticed that if you come to this site and you kind of sit idle for a while, uh, they'll come on and and you know it'll it'll ask you, hey, do you do you need some help? Do you want to talk to somebody? Uh, so that's another great feature. And if you know that you want to come on and talk to somebody, there is a live chat button over here where you can go ahead and initiate that. Now what I'd like to do at this point, because I promised we weren't going to talk, 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 and we've gone probably about 10 minutes longer than I wanted to. Any of you who know me know that that's every time I talk. It, it always goes longer than I think it's going to. But I'd like to address some questions. Uh, so I see there's a few of them in here. Uh, I'm going to start off with a question here from William that says, I have 15 years IT experience, but don't have any certification. I plan on going to uh, MCSM certification, so uh, great, William, that you're, you're setting your goals uh, real high there, which is appropriate because you have 15 years experience. Uh, it just says, but you're asking, should I bother with A-plus certification? Well, first of all, for anyone who doesn't know what A-plus certification is, that is from uh, a company called CompTIA. Okay, this is a vendor independent or a vendor neutral uh, certification company, and A plus is considered to be a an entry level PC technician type certification. Now, William, I can't give you a definite yes or no on whether you should bother with it. What I can tell you is an opinion, a personal opinion. Uh, you are, uh, and I, I'm going to actually go both directions with this opinion. But uh, the first one I'll say is, I mean, you're 15 years in. Um, I think you, are, you know, just the fact you're asking the question. You know, and it's kind of you're asking, should I bother with it? So it's going to be kind of a maybe a nuisance to you. It's maybe below you. Um, so maybe you don't need to, right? You can I mean, if you're going, you're already going to have your work cut out for you if you're going to do MCSM because you got to do MCSA and then MCSE and, and then get to your MCSM, and that's going to be quite a bit of work. So I don't know if A plus is going to do anything for you. That said, I said I'm going to go both directions with this. You may want to do it because you probably can do it fairly quickly and fairly easily because you have so many years of experience. And it is one more IT certification to have on your resume. And it's not going to hurt you. It can only help you. Uh, I have another question here from Donald. Uh, how do the CompTIA, hey, look at that, CompTIA A+. Everyone wants to know about CompTIA. Erica, I guess they don't want to know about Microsoft. But how do the CompTIA A+, <laughs> and Network+, Plus compare to the MTA? See, it did come back to Microsoft. Uh, he, I can only tell you, and, and Erica, you're welcome to chime in if you want, but I think I can probably take this one. As far as A+, plus and Network+, plus, I actually think that those are higher certifications than MTA. MTA is, was originally developed as academic. Um, it was on the academic side of things, so you would get your MTA if you were taking computer classes in high school and in college. Whereas A plus and Network Plus are true entry level into the IT industry, um, MTA they've now advanced it to where they are entry level. But I mean, I, I can only go off of I don't know the difficulty. Maybe um, I think the CompTIA ones. I mean, here's one other example I can give you: is CompTIA again is vendor neutral. Okay, so A plus and Network Plus are going to not be specific to Microsoft. They are going to be just in the industry as a whole. You know how to work with PCs, right, as a PC technician if you're A+, and you know how to do basic computer networking with Network+. Plus. Whereas MTA has similar type exams, but they are specific to Microsoft. Okay, uh, uh, I'm going to actually uh, leave this one for Erica. Uh, Mike wants to know, are the Server 2008 exams retiring soon? Great question. Um, Several exams for Server 2008 are retiring soon, but not all of them. Um, so the, the key thing here, and this is going to go across all product lines, since we have launched the new MCSA, MCSE, MCSD, 
NCSNs, um, what we're doing is we're doing our best to retire all old branding. So all MCTS and MCITPs. We're, we want to take out a market because if, if you guys haven't been around um, in certification and with Microsoft certification for very long, some historical information on that. The MCTS and MCITP were our iteration from the original MCSA and MCSE. And our challenge was we kept both of those brands in market and it caused confusion. So we want to reduce down the confusion as much as possible. So when you think about any of our product lines, any of our certifications, remember that what we're trying to do is get old brand out of market. That doesn't mean we're trying to get all the exams out of market. So the exams for Windows Server 2008 that are going to stay in market are in fact the exams for our MCSA Windows Server 2008. So those will still be around. Everything else will be retiring July 31st of this year. So you'll see that those exams will no longer be available in order to earn the old MCITP Enterprise Administrator. That certification will go away. The MCITP Server Administrator will also go away. Granted, again, those exams will stay in market, but instead you're going to earn an MCSA Windows Server 2008. And then, of course, all the MCTSs, which are part of the MCITPs, those certifications will go away as well. If you're in process of earning a Windows Server 2008 certification, I highly recommend doing it before July 31st. And the reason is you'll get several certifications on your transcript rather than after July 31st, you're really only going to see the MCSA Windows Server 2008. Okay. So, um, you know, just also just keep in mind, even though, you know, you were saying, yes, they're going to retire soon, we're still talking six months. So if you are in process, there is still is plenty of time to get that done if that is something you wish to achieve. Um, Takim has a question here. If I'm personally employed in IT as a junior system admin and not currently certified in Microsoft uh, and interested in getting started today with Microsoft certifications, should someone like that start with the MCITP Server Administrator 2008, which, interesting, right in the question noted that expires July 31st, which you just mentioned, Erica, or should we jump right into the new MCSA Server 2012 training? Uh, here's the thing. There is no one correct answer to that. There really isn't. I know you want direct answers to these things. Um, what I can tell you is this. That question right there, I probably get asked more than any other question out of, I mean, combined, <laughs> uh, ever since the new MCSA and MCSE came out. What The answer I give across the board every time is I pretty much say, hey, if you are very proficient in Windows Server 2008, then I usually recommend, hey, why not? Why not go ahead and get started there? The process may be a little bit easier for you to get some certifications, right? Get, get some of these letters behind your name because it's, it's a product you've worked with for many years. Uh, so it's a great way to kind of, you know, test the waters, right? You're just kind of dipping your, your toe into the pool to see, see how warm or cold it is. And, uh, you know, and then from there, you'll qualify for an upgrade exam to get to MCSA 2012. If you are not proficient in Windows Server 2008, and in, by the way, I do understand that with this question, you probably are based upon the, the number of years of experience in this net. But if you're not proficient in Windows Server 2008, usually my personal recommendation is, well, you might as well just go ahead and start on what's current. Just start on Windows Server 2012 because... 2008 or 2012 is going to be probably about the same workload in either direction. So that's the same answer I give to that question every time I'm asked, and I've been asked numerous times, and I expect to be asked again and again and again. All right, Justin says, this is much better. I assume you're talking about the certification and or the website that we were looking at. So, Justin, thank you for the compliment. Um, Let's see here. I see on the Microsoft Learning site that MCSA Server 2008 is available and requires the 70-640. Does passage of this exam still earn MCTS designation? Uh, so Erica already answered that just a few moments ago. Between now and July 31st, uh, the answer is yes. 
after July 31st, the exam will still exist towards MCSA 2008, but not towards MCTS or MCITP. Is that correct, Erica? That is correct. Okay. I have one little additional thing that maybe helps people as well. Okay. For passing any um, Microsoft exam, so any Microsoft exam, the first exam that you pass, you will earn an MCP, which is a Microsoft Certified Professional Certification. It's basically your entry into the program. It designates that you have taken and passed a Microsoft Certification exam. So that 7640, that happens to be your very first one. On August 1st, while you won't earn the MCTS, you will earn an MCP. That is only earned once. You don't earn multiple MCPs. You just earn it once. Right, right. And that's why if you went, we went all the way back to my original intro slide, although I had times two and times three and times four and times five on some of these others, MCP is, if you're a Microsoft certified professional, if you're part of the program, you're part of the program. You, you, don't, you don't get 8,000 of them for taking 8,000 tests. And actually, I'll even clear that, I'll clarify a little bit on that. You will get two MCPs, Ed. I will? Yes. So all we right. have. Our old MCP is what we're designating as our legacy MCP, and then the new MCP is for the new exams in the, in the program because there was that time period where our MCTS exams and MCITP exams did not qualify for an MCP. So right. there was a period of time it didn't get you an MCP. We've changed that back around. So cool. uh, starting fresh, starting new, the new exams in the program for MCSA, MCSE, MCSM, um, should that be your first stop along the way? Um, all of those exams will count as well as the MTA exams as well. Really? Okay. So, uh, so basically, because uh, I've had this question come up, a lot of people have said, "Hey, you know, with the way they've done the new certifications, you know, it makes sense and this and that." But in order to get your first Microsoft certification which you know at MCSA uh, you have to take three exams and I've been asked the question point blank if I just take the 410 if I just take the 70-410 do I get anything in the way of certification and the answer the way I understood it before just now just a moment ago was that you get entered into the program but there was not an actual MCP certification anymore are you saying that not only are you in the program but MCP has been brought back it has been brought back. That is, you know what, that is actually that is great news. That really is. That's great news. And I'll look forward to just having yet one more certificate to throw on my wall um, <laughs> that I've already Sounds heard. Good. All right, let me, let me move through these questions. We've got quite a few of them. We're, we're going to get short on time here. Um, are the third-party practice tests uh, a good measure of your ability to pass the Microsoft exams? Uh, Eric is asking that question. And um, yeah, yes, but I want to put a couple of uh, my own personal – uh, uh, side notes to that. One is just because you're passing a third-party practice test does not necessarily mean that you are ready for the real test. Uh, I know many people who take these third-party practice tests and what they do is they just take the test and they get a uh, 50% on it and they think, oh my goodness, I, I, I'm not there yet. And then they take it again and they get a 75%. They take it again and they get a 90. They take it again and they get a 98. And they take it again and they get a 99. And, and, you know, some of these some of these companies even say, keep taking it till you get 100%. The problem is, is if you're seeing the same questions, subconsciously you're going to start getting the answers right, even though you may not actually know what why that answer is right. So if you are using these third-party practice tests to make sure that you are solid on what you're being questioned about, when you, if you're solid on the objectives, you're solid on the topics – then yes, it is a good measure, but not just because you're getting a good score on the test. The second thing is make sure that you are using a reputable practice test. That's part of why Microsoft does actually give links to them on, from their website. Uh, I, I believe the two companies that you guys uh, stand behind, uh, Erica, are uh, MeasureUp and Kaplan Self-Test. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay, so those are the two companies that Microsoft, uh, I don't know if it's officially called certifies, but they, they definitely, uh, they'll tell you that they stand behind those products in the sense that they, they recommend them. They say that they, they you know, they've, they've looked at them and they, they do map to the exam pretty well. Um, 
The, the other thing I will caution you about is there are uh, other practice test companies which are not only not reputable, meaning they may not even be asking you the right questions, but there's also the ones that are sometimes referred to as brain dumps in the sense that they are illegally uh, trying to throw the, you know, it's almost like stealing the test out of the teacher's drawer, right? They're throwing the real questions at you. Um, Microsoft has worked very, very hard to eliminate as many of these companies as possible. Matter of fact, uh, there's one, and I was just curious, I actually went today, Erica, to see what happens when you try going to their site. I'm not going to mention them by name, but I went to uh, the site of one of these companies, one of these brain dump companies, who Microsoft won a lawsuit against, and I went to the website, and what does it do? It redirects you actually to Microsoft's security website, and that's great. Um, so just, I, I, I'm going to throw caution at you, and I'm going to say, it's real easy to get caught up in the thought of, all right, well, I know that I really know what I'm doing, and I just want to pass a test, and so I'm going to go ahead and look at one of these brain dumps. The problem you have is, besides all the various things that I guarantee you Erica could throw out there about what they're doing on their end um, and the negatives that could come with that, um, I'm just going to tell you, from not, not with Microsoft, but just at a personal level, that, um, um, hey, Erica, are you typing? Yes, sorry. I thought it was on you. <laughs> no. Um, on a personal level, you know what? If you, just like with anything else in this world, if you cheat, well, then you've cheated. You know, I mean, what's, what's the point, right? You cheat, you pass the test, you get a piece of paper that you put on your wall, you get a, some letters you get to put on your resume. But the bottom line is, is when you get out there in the real world, you're not going to succeed. So anyway, so that's the thing to be careful of there. Uh, moving along, let me get through a few more of these questions. Uh, I plan on starting off with my Microsoft certification. Should I start off with the new MCSE because I was already studying for MCITP? Again, I get that question again and again and again. Same answer. If you're if you've already started and you're very you know you've gotten maybe halfway through it or maybe you're very proficient in 2008, go ahead and continue with it, especially if you think you can get it done by July 31st. Otherwise, jump over to 2012. Uh, next question, I'm interested in MCSE private cloud. I'm hoping to pass my 2008 70-659 exam by the end of January. How does this work with the 2012 track? Uh, it does mention on the site that I don't need to do the 247 if you do the uh, 659 before the end of January. Uh, the easy answer to that is that is correct, uh, meaning between now and January 31st, so in, over the next couple weeks, if you take and pass the 659, then you do not have to take the 247. It, it, and go ahead. I was, let me add some clarification to that. You have to complete the entire track by the end of January. Oh. If you take and pass 659, you have to have passed everything. As of February 1st, the requirement changes, and 659 doesn't count. Aha. Okay. So if you think you can finish the entire track, and get the entire private cloud MCSE by January 31st, great. Otherwise, stop focusing on 659 and start studying 247. Yes. All and right. Well, yes, and just go ahead. for additional clarification, because it was asking about 2012, the MCSA Windows Server 2012 uh, will count towards credit. Um, unfortunately, right now, uh, we're in the midst of updating our database. Uh, we have a fairly long process to make that happen, so it is accurate. Um, so that will count, but both the Windows Server 2008 and the 2012 MCSAs do count as a prerequisite. Okay, cool. Uh, real quick, what I want to do here, because I see that our, our hour is up, uh, there are a few more questions I would like to get to in the Q&A, but what I want to do is, for those of you who maybe need to uh, you know, you only had the hour available, and you want you want to uh, get off to something else that you need to be doing. Uh, I'm going to hand this over to Dana, who's going to do a little wrap up with you, uh, and then after her wrap up, I'm going to stick around for about another maybe 10 minutes or so, and try to nail out a few more of these questions for you. Since I said I talked about 10 minutes too long, <laughs> Dana. Thank you, Ed, and thanks everyone for attending and for your participation today. As a reminder, today's webinar will be was recorded and will be available to view at trainsignal.com forward slash blog forward slash webinars. We will also email you the link in a few days. And remember, as you leave, please fill out the survey. Thanks again and have a great day. All right, thanks, Dana. And uh, just to kind of get back to these questions, I am I'm reviewing through them and I'm seeing there is a lot of repetition and, and that's fine, like I said. 
uh, the very next question I have is, is it worth getting the MCITP on Server 2008 before it expires in July? Um, it, it, again, if you are, I mean, yes. I, I, coming from me personally, just, you know, my generic uh, answer is yes. Uh, it, it's certainly not going to hurt you. Uh, it's going to help you to be able to show MCITP uh, and then also show MCA and MC, or, or I should say MCSA and MCSE. Um, what is the uh, price tag for the new MCSA and MCSE? I assume you mean for the individual exams, and they're actually different depending on uh, where in the world you are. Uh, I do know that here in the U.S., uh, they are $150, correct, Erica? Did I lose Erica? That is correct. Oh, okay. So, yeah, nope. so I, I can say... I can tell you that they are $150, but I can also tell you that there's a number of programs out there to help with that. Um, there are occasional discount programs that are out there, but more importantly, right now, uh, there's the second shot offering. So that uh, it may be $150, but you get two, sh two tries at it. So that if you fail the first time, uh, you don't have to pay another $150 to take it again. Um, what is the best certification path from older MCSA, MCSE certifications to the current MCSA, MCSE? Uh, Erica, if I am correct, there is no direct upgrade path from uh, Windows Server 2003 MCSA, MCSE uh, into the Windows Server 2012 stuff or the current stuff. But I believe you... That is correct. Is, is there still a path to do a double upgrade, though? There is. Okay. Um, so, although I will say that's only going to be available to the end of July. And and I will say that I don't know that I recommend it. I don't know that it really does a whole lot for you. If you are an MCSA, MCSE, back in Windows 2000, Windows, well, if you're back in Windows 2000, then there's no upgrade path. But if it's, MC, if it's Windows Server 2003, you know, by the time you go through the upgrade exams that you have to take to get to 2008 and then do the upgrade exam to get to 2012, you could have just started on 2012. Uh, so unless you specifically want to show that you have certifications in all the products along the way, I would probably just start at 2012 and, and move forward. Um, yeah. again, again, I have the same. Did you have something else or were you just agreeing? Uh, no, I was just going to say I totally agree with that. It, it, the only value to earning the 2008 ahead of time is, just like you said before, if you have experience with 2008, it will be easier because of your experience. Um, as opposed to starting brand new 2012 server, which I would assume at this point that hasn't been out that long, would be considered new. Um, so the value would be being able to pass those exams because of your existing experience and getting additional certifications along the way. But if you are just literally, you haven't don't have 2008 experience, I would definitely recommend going to 2012 and look for a promotion coming out. Uh, we are looking to launch something that in fact encompasses what you need to earn for that entire MCSE that will, in fact, I would say, be cheaper. So it okay. should be launching fairly soon. It, it will be more inexpensive. There's nothing cheap yes. about it. That's true. It'll be, all right. <laughs> it will cost less for the total of all the exams. Okay. So, so everybody, you, you heard it here, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Some, you know, keep your eyes open for this. Um, uh, there is a question here about have the need to travel to Redmond for the MCM or what's now M MCSM. Uh, Erica explained that in some cases, yes. In some cases, no. Uh, in some cases, there's not even that training yet available. All right. Um, I'm going to try. I'm just kind of, I, I have to tell you guys, I'm seeing the same question again and again and again, just as I knew I would about the 2008 versus 2012. Um, let's see. With the recertification every three years, will there be a new server operating system every three years. Uh, here's here's the thing, um, and Erica, I don't even think you, are, I don't think any of us can actually answer that with any kind of guarantee because when new stuff comes out, there's a lot of factors involved. Uh, but Eric and I have had discussions about that and the fact that there could be a recertification in three years, but there may not be a full-blown new product in three years. Just because there's not a new product doesn't mean that how the current product is being used and the solutions aren't still ever changing. Uh, service packs come out. Uh, we have R2 versions of operating systems and so on and so forth. So recertification is a necessity because in three years time 
the way we are providing these solutions does change. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's a new product, though. Um, second shot, we talked about that. I'm just kind of looking through. I apologize because uh, there's a lot of the same question. Uh, uh, let's see here. Do you get to put the uh, – so, Erica, this is a question for you and the MCP thing that you just mentioned. Do you get to put the MCP notation on your business card, resume, et cetera, once, once it has been released? Correct, yes. Okay, so it is, it is a full-blown certification with a certificate uh, and a logo and everything. Absolutely. That is awesome. All right, um, once certified, this is another one, stay on with me here, Erica. Uh, once certified, is there any time limit on using the certification title? Because my understanding is, is there is a difference here on depending on which title it is. Uh, yes, if it is an MCSE or an MCSD, you have to keep it current and active. Um, now, of course, what I will tell you is this. We will not remove it from your transcript because if you think of it, it's like a college degree. I earned my college degree. It doesn't go away because I haven't taken a single college class in the last 15 years. Right. I still get to keep it. You get to keep it, um, but, but, we, but it's retired, or it's or it's not retired, we, but uh, expired. We, I don't know. <laughs> we call it inactive. Inactive, uh, okay. So we basically state that the, the certification isn't active anymore, um, which means you just haven't kept up on it. You haven't recertified. There are a variety of reasons people don't keep up on their certifications, um, but ideally we like people to keep up on them, so when you do recertify, it remains in that active section. I got you. So basically, if I get my MCSE, Right now, uh, and it's now the year 2023, so it's 10 years from now, and I have not recertified, I still have the ability to say, hey, back in, to, back in 2013, I did achieve my MCSE. It's just not active anymore. It's in, a, it's in an inactive state. Correct. Okay. Um, cool. Uh, years ago, and this is a question actually I have as well, Erica. Uh, years ago, you used to be able to use uh, certain other vendor certs as a substitute for certain Microsoft exams. Is there any of that still in existence? And don't speak to the MCTS or MCITP, but strictly with all the new stuff, are the, like, specifically CompTIA exams still counting towards anything at all at this point? Uh, I can tell you we still have our MCSA on Windows Server 2003 active and available. Now most of those exams um, I would say are retired so you can't earn it unless you've already passed those exams. Right. Um, so it would count for those um, but that certification will be retired as of July 31st which means um, regardless of if you're one exam away and it happens to still be available you won't earn it. Um, it's basically retired at that point, unearnable, but if you earn it before that you keep it, it stays on your transcript and um, you would need to uh, validate or provide that proof of the CompTIA exams prior to July 31st. Okay, but there's there's nothing towards the new MCSA, that, no. that, that, and I didn't think so. I just wanted to make sure rather than saying no. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to throw a question out here just because I want everyone to realize that I'm not, I'm not filtering these. I'm willing to ask anything because there is a question here about why does Microsoft keep on changing? <laughs> University degrees don't change even when their courses change. Isn't it a way to rip us off? And I'm more than happy to throw a question like that out there and then address it, as I know Erica is as well. Because, first of all, it's an easy answer as far as the question itself. To rip, is it to just rip everyone off? No. And I don't work for Microsoft. And as you can tell from certain things I've said here today, I don't automatically say it just because... Erica's with us. Um, it, it's not to rip you off. Uh, I've been very involved with Microsoft Learning when these changes have been made, and I've been very candid with them about what I thought was good, a uh, good move, and what I thought was a bad move. Uh, and it is what it is. What they're doing is you have to understand that there is a little bit of a difference between certification and a college degree. Um, I am with you. I am definitely with you on the mindset of why can't we just do something and stay with it. But there's just certain realities that in technology, 
things are moving, things are changing. I can tell you that when the certification program was created back in the 1990s, uh, what it was is not what it is today. The purpose that it serves changes. Uh, HR managers will present feedback that they're confused and need to see something that makes more sense to them. And, and the bottom line is these changes are happening because Microsoft Learning wants to have certifications and have a certification program that makes sense to the industry as it stands today. So, I, you know, that's a question that does come up. It's a question I've asked, but the, 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 the answer is easy. No, this is not about ripoff by any stretch of the imagination. All right, real quick. To add, yeah, go ahead. So, so one thing to add to that, Ed, as well. So thank you. That was a very good explanation. Um, some of the feedback that we've gotten about our technology is, in the past, we kind of focused in on one, zeroed in on one technology. And we're, what we're looking at today is that things are much more complex than they've been in the past. And they involve multiple technologies. And they require much more advanced skills than what we were testing for in the past in order to be successful. So what we're trying to do is ensure that someone's successful on the job. Um, so that's the most important thing is really what it boils down to is we're trying to support the Microsoft products and the success of those products and the way that you interact with those products and how you feel and your satisfaction with them. So that's how, why we design them um, that way. But also another thing uh, kind of going back to like the recertification aspect uh, we have so many quick changes coming up in our technology that we haven't seen. You know, the cloud is really impacting how quickly we start to see changes in the technology. And I can even point to, you know, the leaking of Windows Blue. Windows 8 just came out and we're already talking about another version. So again, these certifications and the way that they're developed, what we're trying to address is the changes in technology and how technology is being used. That is our utmost and, and primary objective when we're when we're doing this. Okay, great. Um, I I am going to have to bring this thing to a close. Uh, we we are out of time. Uh, I think we got to the majority of the questions. It looks like there might have been a few uh, that are still hanging out there, um, but I, I can tell you that, that more are going to keep coming in as we answer them. So what I've done is I've I've actually put up on the screen. Um, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Train Signal, reach out to Microsoft Learning with these questions. We are available to help you out with this. We want all your questions answered. Um, I have here, for me personally, uh, you can come to my, my Facebook page, Train Signal Ed. Uh, Twitter, I'm not on Twitter very much, but feel free to follow me if you want uh, with, at Train Signal underscore Ed. As far as uh, Train Signal itself, uh, we have our blog, we have a Facebook page, we have a Twitter. As far as Microsoft Learning, you can get a lot of information. And I can't emphasize the word lot, or, or a lot, the two words, a lot, on Born to Learn. Okay, So that's a great place to go and get uh, all your questions answered. Uh, and, but when you want to get specific to learning and certification, of course, at the very bottom here, I have the site that we were looking at the entire uh, presentation, which is Microsoft.com forward slash learning. So with that, I want to thank everyone for hanging out with me for the last hour and 10, 15 minutes or so. And Erica, I appreciate you taking the time to be here to uh, help out and help get these questions answered. And uh, that's pretty me. much, yeah, no, it's a pleasure. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see you all next time. Thanks a lot.